Welcome to another video here in Netherlands and I've just arrived at this windmill village here to check out the, the windmill area here which is what Netherlands is famous for and where this right now it's absolutely freezing as well and it was a bit rainy this morning oops yeah so I'm here at the windmill village here in Amsterdam on the countryside as you can see the river here which flows throughout all the other side of that area there and I can see it because on my way here in the bus and there's a lot of streams here that cuts across all the wetlands here in this area of Netherlands since Netherlands is so low I mean it's just one meter above sea level so there needs to be a lot of streams here and that is how they manage the the water system here I guess I don't know how to say it really but that is how they manage and prevent floods from all around the country and next to me here we have a souvenir shop as well as some cafeteria that sells ice cream hot wine as well it is the sun slit and as you can see over there look at all these streams here and all this river here like this mini mini streams they eventually lead to a bigger river here in Amsterdam and over there which is where I'm gonna go as well you can see the windmill there facing across the, the wetlands over there and I apologize because it is windy here but I thought I still want to show you this amazing country on the countryside as I walk across the bridge to my right you can see the windmill and there is a huge windmill here and this windmill dated back to the 17th century or the 1700s whereby there used to be over a thousand more than a thousand windmill all across Netherlands but as the country thrives um, there's only about a thousand windmill left here in Netherlands spread throughout the various um, countrysides and what they use for windmill is to generate electricity as well as to help break down peb um, small little um, pebbles here or like concrete or stuff like that they use windmill for various kind of things back in the past but because it is so expensive to maintain there's only about a thousand windmill left all across Netherlands here. so as I overlook from this bridge here to my left there's the windmill place and that is the bigger streams the bigger river here and all these smaller streams will eventually lead to the bigger river there and another fact about Netherlands is that a lot of these houses are built next to the river because there are many streams that meanders around Netherlands it's like almost everywhere you go there will always be a river but the river that is in Amsterdam is actually man-made where else, where else the river or the streams here in the countryside they are natural and to my left here we have 1887 to 1987 signed here and that's where I got dropped off right over there at the car park and then I've walked all the way here here to face the back of the windmill and this is an amazing amazing place Netherlands is really famous for their windmill here in the countryside 
and as soon as I cross the border of Germany towards um, Netherlands, you can already start seeing huge windmills here spread all across the country. And to my left here, this is actually the cheese factory, whereby I'm gonna go inside and check out some cheese. Here we have birds and chickens. And inside that hut, I can see some sheep. I don't know if you can see because it's black. So windmills like this are not common now in Amsterdam. What is common is the windmill that is white in color and is huge. Because windmills like this are built in the 17th century by people. But because it is so hard to maintain and it's so old fashioned that the government decided to destroy and there's only about a thousand of windmills left. But the most common windmills that I managed to see around Amsterdam are not wooden windmills, they are more modern windmills. So here is the cheese factory. And they sell different kind of cheese here, but most famously they sell the cheese they are made in Netherlands. If my facts are correct. And I forgot the name of the cheese here, but if not I can let you know while putting the description here. But here we have more ducks and swan here. I guess they're ducks, they're not swan. They have chickens there. Yeah? Alright, I'm gonna go inside the cheese um, shop here. Yeah, I don't think I'm allowed to film, but we're gonna continue on with our journey here in the windmill uh, village here in Amsterdam after I visit the cheese factory. I mean the cheese, the cheese shop. And right in front of the cheese shop here, we have a chicken that has escaped. And if you look at the chicken here, the chickens are really fat. Because what they do here is that they really feed the chicken properly. They really take care of the animals here, and I've been observing that there's a lot of fat chickens and fat ducks here, and it's very different. It could be a different breed, but they're really fat because they are really um, fed properly here by the people. So I am allowed to film in here, so I can show you a little bit of the cheese here. We have herbs and garlic cheese, truffle cheese, pepper cheese, it's about 10 euro, 11.95. And this is the cheese that intrigued me here, it's called the Gouda cheese. And you buy it like this, by itself, it's about 18 euro. And in the middle section here, we have another different kind of cheese. This is the limited edition cheese here. Dual cow and goat young. We even have forest mushroom cheese made in Holland. Henry Wick cheese. So I want to try this cheese here. I've already gotten one. Mm. 
a chicken has entered the shop. <laughs> so I was told that the chickens here and the ducks they actually eat the cheese inside as well and I saw this sign too much bread and we are dead that's a funny sign but anyway the weather has taken a turn here it started pouring just now as soon as I go inside but now it is extremely freezing But we're still going to continue our journey to the other side as we're going to explore those sides of the windmill here. Now some of the users of the windmill back in the past was so that it can be used to pump water out of the lowlands and into the dikes and into the streams, into the river so that the, the land can be used for farming besides using it for electricity and to power up their lamps back in the past they also use it for agricultural activities as you can see here, the streams and I told you earlier on that Holland is a lowland country but by it's just one meter above sea level so you can see there are many many streams here and, and as I point the camera in the distance can't see but there's a huge river there and all these streams like I mentioned earlier on will end up in the bigger streams which is the, the river there as I walk towards the windmill there You can see that back in the past, all these lands here are used for agricultural activities such as farming, such as lands for their cattle, and there is the biggest stream there. And during winter, as of right now, this place is not really packed, but during summer, this place will be filled and swarm with tourists. And up in the distance, we have factory pumping up gas into the atmosphere. And if you walk over there, you can go to this jetty. And I believe boats do pick up people and drop off people here. about to piss down here so I'm gonna walk towards this bigger windmill and I'm gonna call it a video guys because there's nothing much to explore here really besides the cheese factory and the wooden clock which I might include in this video as well well since I'm here you know back in the 17th or 18th century since Netherlands is famous for their wet and windy weather so what the, what the Dutch people has come up with is that they came up with the wooden clock C-L-O-G it is a wooden shoe that people back in the past Dutchmen back in the past used to wear so that they can walk on all these lowlands here without getting their shoes um, really wet if I'm not mistaken and there is a wooden clock uh, factory here whereby previously back in the past the 17th or 18th century wooden clock were handmade they would carve the Dutch woman would carve this wooden clock but now that we are so modernized that wooden clock are really mass-produced but there are also ones that are more expensive 
the high grade ones that are handmade. So, from this windmill village here in Netherlands, I'm gonna say goodbye and see you on my next video. Let's be done, yeah. See ya. So next to me here is the Klompen factory. Klompen is basically a wooden clock here. Back in the day, there used to be a wooden base and leather straps here. But it was later modified to completely wooden. The whole thing would be wooden as based on the um, the wooden clock here, or they call it Klompen, was inspired by the Roman period. Because back during the Roman Empire, all the shoes were made from wood. So the Netherlands has adopted it since uh, medieval times. Klompen Makerich Wooden Shoe Workshop Museum 3 and 3. Back in the 17th century, the wooden clock became famous as a work shoe for everyone here in the Netherlands. And as soon the Dutch was the pioneer or the, the one who created this wooden clock before in the 18th and 19th century onwards, whereby this wooden clock started spreading to France, Italy and England as well. And soon the people in the West started adopting and they started wearing wooden clock as their primary work shoe. And since it is made of wood, it is more of a safety shoe in what we call it here in the modern days. Because the wood, they will make it so to protect every part of the food. And people will use it for industrial work, for farming, as well as for everyday lives. And just ahead, in front of you here, these are all the various designs of the wooden clock. This one with the leather straps here. Uh, the ones that are firstly built and then soon it was modified to become completely wooden back in the 16th, 17th century if I'm not mistaken. Most probably in the 17th century. And soon it started becoming like this. Whereby the whole thing is wood to protect the worker. Well, we have people filming documentary here about this place, about the wooden clock. And right inside here, let me show you through the window, is where they would Try not to photo get in the way of people trying to photograph it. So inside is a shop whereby they do sell all this wooden clock here. And I'm gonna go and check it out. Let's check it out. Winter opening hours 8 to 5. Let's go in and check out all this. There's a shoe here called Volendan Marken. This is more during the period of the Roman Empire, whereby it's just wooden shoe and not much design. And soon after, not long, the Dutch would start introducing carvings and paintings in the shoe. It's frosted. So, here on display, we have several different kinds of klompen here. And the wooden one, the pure wooden one, are the more famous one during the time of the Roman Empire. 
this that is where the Dutch adopted their design and then they came out with the one that has the wooden strap here before it was later on modified to become completely wooden and then the Dutch would add paintings and carvings into their wooden clock so as to give it some kind of a design This kind of shoes are famous in the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire, yeah, the soldiers or the kings or everyone, their workers, would use wooden clocks like this. But it is not the same one that the Dutch has invented or pioneered. And to the right, you can see photographs of all these historical moments. And there's a long line here of tourists. But I want to see it. And the more modern wooden clock here in the 18th and 19th century, whereby they started to add designs and paintings to make it more formal and more special. So since Netherlands are really famous for their bicycle, this is what the people used to have in the early 19th century. And this is more of the design that they started carving into their wooden clocks or their clomp pen. These are the more olden ones with the leather straps. So here is how they make the wooden clock. Back in the past, it was all handmade and hand carved. But in these modern times, they have just started using machineries and now factories do mass produce the wooden clock. So then, back in the past, that is how they do it. Now traditional, all wooden shoes are made by hand. They use the large knife for the outside with the so-called spoon scoops to follow out. It's a real tough job. It took about two to three hours making them by hand. My machines, it only takes five hours. She will make the outside, same system as duplicating keys. This part follows the model, the knives cut out the exact same shape. These are the modern wooden clocks, they are mass produced by factories. Let's check out the shops here. We have more design. We have the ones with some wax in it and some pure ones. This one costs about 58 euro and the basic one costs about 32 euro. Alright guys, so that's it for me, here in the Windmill Village here, see you on my next video, that's it then there, bye bye.